Today's video features cats and water. If you're new to the Turner 81 channel, it's backstory time. The neighbors cats have invaded my backyard, intruding almost nightly. Their own ongoing turf war sees them competing to see who can leave the most wee stench on everything, which is all in an effort to become the cat king and lay claim to uninterrupted feeding on native birds that live in my backyard. This has always been a problem, but now I'm particularly concerned as a family of New Holland honey eaters have set up camp way too close to the cat thoroughfare. In an, <coughs> in an effort to repel these stealthy beasts of the night from urine spraying everywhere and eating the baby birds, whom I've named Drogzy and Raza, <coughs> I went about building a machine that would stop them using a motion sensor, a garden hose, bits of plastic, Tw uh, tweezers that are in a drill, uh, bits of my car, the hair of a sleeping human, other things, some tomato sauce on a stick. Yeah, I know, my recap's getting a bit slack, but I made a cheap and humane motion activated cat repellent system, which I call motion activated cat repellent, except this version, which I named Craig for some reason. But yeah, I've made a separate video about how to build the thing I'm talking about, and also my original version from way back. In our last video, the birds made it to day 10 of their life. They mostly hung out in the nest, waiting for food from mum and dad. <coughs> the mama bird pulled a pre-packaged butt nugget out of one of them, and they generally slept and stuff. But in the night, the cats invaded. We had Globib drop in for the first time, showing us how kangaroo mode works and demonstrating the quickest way to get through the backyard obby. We also had old mate Tabby Toilet Rug drop in for the second time since the birds have hatched, but he managed to slip past the repellent. Then the fresh faced turtle cat who came to munch on some birds, however copped a significant drenching. He showed us his turtle shaped skills and slipped on a steel beam, then went off to play with the neighbors dogs. We whipped up a new tripod in order to lower the spray effect while heightening the kitty get wet effect. White Mo took a big old piss on the car and then was conveniently rehydrated by the repellent. And lastly, Undersniffer came around for the third time and got a hosing because Undersniffer has the intelligence of a pool noodle. Or a broom handle. Not one of those telescoping broom handles though. Those things are both clever and convenient, especially for storage, getting into tight spaces, and get some microfiber bristles on there, got yourself a good broom. Crago's broom review. No, fixing a door. In the comments, fortunately we had less gate people, but we had more comments saying things like, it's just nature, cats kill birds, you're messing with the food chain, it's a circle of life. It's like, what? I didn't realize how many people thought The Lion King was a nature documentary but it's probably my fault for not explaining clearly and using words like introduced predator and native birds. Let's simplify it. Australia and some other countries and islands were isolated by big oceans and deserts for millions of years. Amazing unique plants and animals evolved, like the western ground parrot, the honey possum, and the pink and gray flesh feeding cockatoo. Nah, kidding, cats don't harm these ones. They can only be killed by fire or a diamond pickaxe. But there were no cats. Then only 200 years ago, Europeans came along, brought cats here. We let them run around and do whatever they like, cat party. They kill the animals, dead, and are driving some to extinction. So long story short, it's not nature for them to kill these birds because we, the humans, put the cats there in the first place and let them continue their cat party. Anyway, sorry it's taken so long to get this next part edited. There's been lots going on. Blah, 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 excuses. Just show the video, too much talking. Blah. But let's pick up where we left off. It's now day 11. The New Holland honey eaters, Drogzy and Raza have been doing well. The dad gives them a feed of insects. Some for you, some for you, some for you, some for you, some for you. Nice work, dad. If you watch it back, he's just dished out eight perfectly even serves, so there's no arguing from them later. Raza is a bit slow to swallow some, Dad declares an official, you snooze, you lose, and takes a share. Then he shows them his mad rapid fire tongue skills. The kids are both super intrigued. To make sure Drogzy gets a nice close look, he tongue punches him in the eye a few times. Then he just hangs out for a bit. 
So what have you guys been up to? Anyone got any turd sacks for me? Any interesting stories? Raz is like, Dad, when am I going to get my own phone? All the other fledglings got one. And he's f***ing out of there. The sun has set, and the cat repellent is standing by to guard the backyard from any felines wanting to have a late night snack. Mum and Dad have hit the casino, and the birds are sleeping on their own for the first time while still in the nest. Beaks out. A mosquito wanders by. Here's a fun fact about mosquitoes, they're deads. If it wasn't for the birds in a nest, I would have seriously punched that guy right in the proboscis. Proboscis. Right in his stupid dumb needle face. Proboscis. Proboscis. It is now dawn, and we have yet another new face. I thought it might be a fox at first, with the size of his ears. Let's call him all ears. It's like there's two satellite dishes stapled to his head. He does look quite young though. Maybe his owners acquired him as an upgrade because their other cats kept coming home wet all the time. They've got no collar on him, but they have him out and about, so we can probably assume he's not sterilised, vaccinated, or microchipped either. Bright future ahead for all ears. It also looks like another cat that seems pretty confident where he's going, like it's not his first time. There's a left sniff, a right sniff. He's successfully logged in. But no, he hasn't. It was two-factor authentication. Should have checked his messages for a verification code. He heads for the garden. No, it's a fake out. He's heading for the fence. He has a quick think about what's just happened. Eh, I'm a cat. And he heads back to wash the other side. But unfortunately, with his speedy pass, the spray circuit hasn't reset in time, and all ears has made it through. He heads back home, probably to find himself a nice place on the couch to dry off, do the splits, and lick his cat sack. On our photo replay, we can see in the first frame that he's completely unaware that a big water snake is about to bite him on the ass. After it strikes, he's lunged forward and responded to the water snake by showing his own cat snake and cat hole. Fair play. He detects a lot of noise going on behind him with those radar dishes and puts the power down and commences his aimless run. There is a little bit of kangaroo mode. He's young and still learning the move though. All ears does the old hyper stretchy leg, and he's heading home. The birds have made it through the night. A day passes. This time lapse shows the progress of time. My voice words reinforce this fact. We're all on the same page. We're all happy. Let's move on. It's now the 12th night. We have a bit of movement in the yard from a dazed and confused cat. It's under sniffer, back for the fourth time. If you remember from my last video, Under Sniffer disappeared into some kind of kitty time portal, but she's made it back. Wonder how many cat days or years have passed since she left. She's looking hungry. Time for a hunt. Maybe a bathroom break first though. She casually makes her way through the cat dome of shame, heading for the gate. Is she going to remember what happens? No, she's gone into the spray for the fourth time. What a surprise. She launches and straight through. Three points Under Sniffer. And she sprints off home, even though she'll probably be back in 10 minutes because she's forgotten what just happened. Looking at our cat, Happy Snaps, she's walked past the sprayer at almost point-blank range. The section of Under Sniffer's brain that recalls past bad experiences is just making a loose car fan belt noise. She steps on the invisible springboard, and it's vertical time. She launches into a big aerial sausage manoeuvre. And it's good vertical height, not the highest we've seen, but I would rate this a 3.5 Blacky McLaser eyes out of 5. Her sausage dive is directed straight for the gate. We can also see she's definitely looking very wet. She has then put on the air brakes, but it looks like she's put out the landing gear way too early. She's coming in way too steep. Just to demonstrate, it should be a little bit more like this. So you want those back legs to land first. Not too close to the gate. Yeah, that'd be a bit too close there. Or she could even try a little bit of a reverse park landing like that, optimised for sniffing under things. On our next frame, we can see Under Sniffer's head has made it through clean, but her back end has blown out into the cat splits, which is way too wide to fit through, and one leg has tagged the gate. And this has got her into a big fish tail with her back end collecting the other side too, but she's made it through. Actually, looking back at that first photo, she's wearing a bell now. Yay! Now the hatchlings and ground-dwelling birds will know to fly away when she's coming. So I figure the bell is more for the psychological purpose, similar to World War II dive bombers having sirens fitted, just to cause fear in its prey before its inevitable death. It is day 13. 
Rachel is missing from the nest. He's dead. No, bad joke, he's fine. He has actually taken his first flight before I had time to check on the nest this morning. Drogon is taking it easy with some nice slow blinks and tongue jabs. <coughs> and there's Raza. He emerges from the ground, showing off his newfound climbing skills. But look at the claws on this guy. I don't know if they grow into them or what, but I reckon that claw to body ratio would almost exceed my jaw to head ratio. He's thinking, where's mum? Got a turd sack for her. Ah, just gonna drop it right here. And a new behavior is learned. He's looking around, doing some pre-flight checks, and he's off. Bang, straight into the ground. Meanwhile, Drogon, he is not interested in this leaving the nest bull. <laughs> he's looking around, wondering where Razor is. <laughs> he can hear him crashing around in the garden into various objects. <laughs> Drogs, he gets the last feed from Dad. But Dad's going, nah, you get no dessert until you leave this nest. Raza has returned to the nest, probably to show off his new arm flapping skills. Drogzy is like, what are you doing, mate? Get back in here. Raza flies up onto the roof. Drogzy's thinking, nah, get down. Mum is gonna be mad as. But Drogon is starting to get super keen on this flying action. Another stretch. And he's left the nest. He's kind of just sitting next to it, though. I thought his exit might be a little more grand, like a scene out of Rio or something, but he's made the first step. He's walking around on the balcony. He's like, yeah, it's a bit cold. Didn't realize this was so high in the air. You know what, screw this, mum's coming anyway. Five minutes has passed and he's back out on the balcony. Mum was like, if you want food, you have to come to me now. He's thinking, this is it. This is the moment. The time is right. And a big fake out. He didn't know about the bit where you let go of the nest and he face plants. I'll just sit here for a minute. And he's done it. Meanwhile, Raza is going free solo. He looks up, the sky's the limit. And then fucking gravity. Drogzy is also making his way up from the ground, ready for another test flight. His brain knows what he wants, but his wings are responding with firmware needs updating before takeoff. Mum and Dad are nearby and both getting pretty cranky at me, yelling this off cameraman and threatening me with all sorts of laser pew pew noises. A few minutes have passed and Drogzy thinks he's got this how to be a bird thing worked out. He's thinking, yeah, I can launch over this gap and he's landed on his face. Dad swoops in to check on his progress. He's suggesting he tries out some additional perching techniques. Drogs is like, hell yeah, I'll have a crack at that. This thick branch here looks like a top choice to have a go on. Look, Dad, got it. Ah, f**k. Dad's not really impressed. Okay, how about this? And up we go. Ah, I mean, yeah. Nailed it. Just doing some good old fashioned perching. Yep, being a bird. Just sitting around, looking at stuff. Night is setting in, and the birds are now outside the hidden cover of the nest, almost at ground level on the cat superhighway. In the coming nights, an onslaught of cats await. Until the birds learn to fly, they are in the most dangerous position we've seen so far. This is coming up in my next video, because I didn't want to take any longer getting this instalment out to you guys. Bat! You've never played Cat Spray Simulator? You know, it's fun, right? I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but give it a try, and then you can tell me if it's good or not. Not convinced yet? Okay, I'll cut you a deal. The game is available for free, and that's a great price. Create defenses to protect the birds. With the cats. For the cat-in. It's the most popular game on the internet. <laughs> Watch out for the rats. Totally got root too. Look after Jorgen. Scratita de Florido. Win the game and eat Sven. Remember, I'm giving away some of these repellents to subscribers. Just drop a comment and say, hey, you could use one. As always, thanks massively for the support, but don't subscribe. It'll just result in me making more content. I'm Craig. YouTube channel is Turn81. Hey, Ray. Looks like this 
Sand. 